Hello viewers, it's Super GT here. Welcome to episode number eight of the Stock Car Challenge. This time we have the Mercedes CLK GTR in S Class, and our first race is here at the Indianapolis Oval. I guess it's an ideal place to test the top speed, the acceleration, and the high speed cornering ability of this car, which I would imagine is quite good. Now this car is actually tuned fairly highly in the class already. It doesn't give away too much, but it's going to still be interesting to see exactly how uh, how I can do. This guy's not giving me a huge amount of room here. I'm going to get passed by a McLaren F1 coming flying through. But into turn three, he doesn't quite have the cornering ability. And look at this, the Mercedes really does have good turning in ability. I'm going to go back past him. He's going to come back past on the inside here into turn four. But once again, doesn't quite have the drive on the entry. Bit of a collision there from someone else. And then these two guys are going to collide up ahead. And I am going to go up the inside. The McLaren F1 almost collecting the inside there, the barrier. Inches away from death, from a certain death. And into turn one, he's looking up the outside. But again, doesn't have the cornering ability on the entry. So I'm through past him and the Corvette. The sailing there going for the corner, um, the wall riding corner technique. And doesn't quite pay off for him through turn one. But through turn two, he has got a better turn in there. And he's going to drive away here, up the straight towards turn three. I'm going to get past here by the McLaren F1. He definitely has the speed on me there. It's great that a car from the 90s is so quick and really can put modern cars to the limit, test the modern cars to the limit. I remember the McLaren F1 testing or racing against the Bugatti Veyron in uh, Dubai, I think it was, on Top Gear. And it really gave it a decent run for its money. A car that's 20 years younger um, gave it a good run for its money. I collect the wall there. Ferrari goes past, and then the Corvette is going to come flying past here, go through the centre of all of us. So that Corvette really gaining out of our uh, misfortune there, or just plain bad driving. The Ferrari goes very wide there, goes uh, into the wall. Corvette again also having a bit of a mare through, uh, through turn one. This is a very interesting race. I go into the back of the Corvette, and he was a little bit slow, and I wasn't expecting that. But then from then on in, uh, from here to the end, I just was not able to match them for speed. So I finished fourth in the end. I did get past one of them as they did uh, spin off somewhere. But that was a decent race in the end, finishing fourth, not quite having the top speed. But the cornering ability was definitely there. So that bodes well for the future races. So let's move ahead. So we moved to Silverstone, the second race of the video. We're going to start from third out of ten. Going into the uh, Cops Corner, the old first turn around here. And as we go across here, this guy behind, I think he got clattered there. He was on the inside. He did have enough space. He did have a car width, but I think he got clattered from someone else from behind into the second turn, looking at the back of the Corvette. And then this guy in the Ferrari is going to do a nice pirouette ahead of us, luckily avoiding us, and then on the exit. It's a drag race between myself and the Audi. Let's see what we can do here. The Saline as well. No, not the Saline. The Ford GT there, sorry. Having a decent run on the exit down the long straight. So what can we do on the brakes here? The brakes are actually pretty decent. The 4 GT goes a little bit too wide there. He's not going to get the best of runs. I'm going to accelerate into that gap to make sure I've got the inside line ahead of him. And he can't get back past there. So I'm going to park it on the apex. And there's nothing he can do. And then on the exit, you see here, the Audi is more than a match for me. So he does drive away. And I am losing quite a lot of time here against him. And then the 4 GT, not quite able to get his uh, power down on the exit of that turn. And into this one, the, the entry speed for this car is actually very good. It's very stable on the entry, so you have a lot of confidence to turn in quite early. And uh, the car will kind of grip. You don't have to worry about correcting the oversteer because it doesn't really exist. And into the second turn, Audi again uh, very late. And I've got deja vu because we are side, uh, side on side once again up the straight. But he is again going to get the drive on me. Nothing I can do about that as he gets a massive gap here going back into the long left. He has got a decent gap. On the brakes, though, you, though you can see, this car has very good potential on the brakes uh, for overtaking opportunities. Um, the car braking very very well there and actually gaining on the Audi. On the exit, though, this is where he is going to gain once again on me. So closing up right behind him on the exit. But here is a clear indicator of the speed differential that the Audi has over me into the first turn. He goes in very narrow for some reason. That is not a good racing line from him. He's losing at least half a second by doing that. And yes, I extend a little bit there. But we get back onto the track. We are being hounded now by an Alpha. Not only a good car, 
in A class, but a very good car in S class as well. Uh, so through the second turn, the Alpha is going to be on my inside here as we exit. And there's nothing I can do against that power. He is most likely going to come through and win this race. So we're going to let him go and see what he can do. Hopefully he battles with the Audi and brings the Audi a little bit closer. I'll go a little, go a little bit too deep on the brakes there into this turn. And I lose maybe half a second or so there. So you can see, compared to the last lap, I've lost at least a second here or two against the Audi. Which is my main rival in this race. The Alpha is most likely going to run away with this one. Or at least he should do in that machinery compared to ours. So that is the halfway mark of the race. Nothing much happened for a while. So we're going to move to the, the last lap of the race. And it kind of proves here that if you just have a solid race and not get involved in too much um, aggro and incidents, you can keep ahead of lots of other people. So the guys behind, there's a train of, I think it's two or three cars, not really a train I guess, but there's a couple of cars and they are battling and that is playing into my hands because it means I can just have a confident, clean race on my own, not worry about getting rammed from behind and I can just drive off the track like that and almost crash and kill myself. But we do get into the apex nicely uh, without uh, driving off the track there. And then through the last turn, we're going to finish third. Not too bad. It, sh it shows the potential of the car. It does um, handle quite stiffly is my main concern for it. It is stable but stiff. It doesn't really turn as well as you'd like. Also needs a bit more power, I would say, on the exits of the turns. That's where I would put most of my PI if I were to tune it up a bit more to the top of S class I would put it in engine upgrades or I could say maybe weight reduction that also improves the acceleration as well so there are the final results getting a clean lap I guess um, always a bonus but then moving on to some bonus clips once again for you today so this is my very first race in this car my very very first race before the Indianapolis one so off the line we go well, this is another Indianapolis one, but obviously the other way around. And we are going into the infield here. And I'm going to go around this guy, around the outside. Testament to the grip of this car. But then, all of a sudden, we got disconnected. So that was very good. And luckily, we managed to rejoin our lobby quite quickly. Moving into Road America. I had a good, very, very good battle with these two couple of cars. And this guy's just going to bounce across the tyre wall. Could not estimate exactly where he was going to go. I didn't think he was going to bounce off the tyre wall quite like that. But he did. And then we moved to Nürburgring where everyone is just kind of morphing into their grid position very late. Should be a penalty for being that late to the grid. But we're going to turn one. Carnage is always expected. And yes, I've just been pushed wide for no no reason at all. Um, I guess he didn't have headlights and couldn't see fuck all. So it went into the back of me. And then it's all kicking off. That guy was upside down a moment ago. And then we move away there. Going into the back of the Ferrari. Yes, I, that was a bit bad for me. But should have anticipated that so I just let everyone go and then given it about two seconds and I've caught up with them already and then yeah look at that two positions and then uh, looking at the back of another guy here and then through this turn the ultimate carnage uh, combo of smoke and night around Nürburgring um, manages to show itself there and then I break in anticipation or slow down in anticipation of not knowing where to go and then get clattered from behind and then moving on to the end of the race, end of my race anyway, going to this one, just drive wide. I was just driving really badly. So in the end, that resulted in a rage quit. Yes, I do that as well. And that is going to be the end of the video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts as always. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of the same. Hit that like button if you did like this video. And I hope to see you in my next one. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.